Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. Compared to most other creators, I spend relatively little time covering the roadmap and roadmap updates. And I thought I would explain why, and having explained why, provide the context that would make me feel better about covering it more. You see, at the core of it, I can't say the words progress tracker about it without feeling like I am misleading you. And most of the other content creators are overstating what the progress tracker is showing. Even those that include disclaimers and understand the limits, it is hard not to be giving a false impression. You see, most architects have to know quite a bit about project management, both to manage their own offices, but also, much more importantly, to work with the contractors building the project and understand the progress and fulfill their role as the owner's representative. I script my videos, and then I work very hard to try to read them like I have not scripted them. I do that because words have meanings, and I want to be very careful with them. So let's start with the meaning of these three words. Allocation is assigning a person or resource to a task. Activity are things that a person or group are doing or has done. Progress is advancement towards a destination. They are three very different things. Now, the monthly reports we receive are clearly activity reports, what each of the departments have been working on in the last month. Interesting, yes, but does it actually inform about progress? Does this thing that the AI team has been working on mean that they are near the end, barely started, or what? Are they working on item 13 of 30, 13 of 300, or item we've stopped counting out of who knows how many? So, as I said, it is an activity report, not a progress report. So then there is the thing that CIG actually calls the progress tracker. And in case you haven't caught on to the path of this discussion, it isn't a progress tracker at all either, because it gives no indication of advancement towards a destination. And the problem is that much of the coverage of it by content creators gives the impression that it does. It is a workforce allocation plan. For this period of time, these people were assigned to work on this activity. But wouldn't that manpower and time be what they would have expected to be needed to finish the item? Maybe not. Sometimes tasks are undertaken to test the feasibility of something. Sometimes they are undertaken just to develop them to the point of removing a blocker on something else. And sometimes, well, they're supposed to be enough to finish the item, but through no fault of their own, stuff happens. Let's take a big example, iCash. iCash was going to be a huge leapfrog over the prior PCache that would allow for full persistence. But you say, isn't that what the editor graph does? Well, yes, but the underlying systems behind iCash proved to be unable to sustain throughput under load at scale, which is DBA speak for it crapped out. So, the expiration date of that time bar and all the people allocated it resulted in maybe a few bits of reusable code for the replication layer, but otherwise zilch. And that is why, despite the visual similarities of this progress tracker to a Gantt chart used in project management, there is a key difference. The Gantt chart includes a marker, either as a tick marker nested bar, that shows actual completion, and thus an indication of progress as advancement towards a destination. And then there are examples of tasks that actually reach their destination but can't be ready. For example, the bar on tax emissions reached completion and then was pulled from the release because it was not ready. I suspect because it needed improvements in the nav mesh, and then after the nav mesh, this curious item about commuter AI behavior. And that is the other difference between a real project management tool and the progress tracker dependency information. These little arrows that show what task this task is dependent on. The most common is a finish start dependency, as in this task can't start until that task is completed, or a finish finish relationship, as is this task can finish, but it isn't really done until that other task or task also finishes. Now, doing a chart of this detail for a project as large as a half billion dollar construction job or a half billion dollar software project is a lot of work and keeping it updated and accurate is even more work. Enough work that, particularly for a project with a lot of uncertainty, like Star Citizen, it is easy for management to decide that the work isn't worth it. And if nobody is paying attention to it, then it, it isn't worth the effort. But if you aren't doing the effort, you aren't actually tracking progress, and you don't have a progress tracker, and you're not being honest by calling it a progress tracker. But if you do do the effort, you can find the critical path, apply a reasonable length of slack time, calculate the cannot start before and must end time for every task on the list, and calculate, hold on to your socks, an actual end date. But if you don't do the work, you not only don't have an actual end date, 
but you can't. You're just making gut guesses. So you might say that my professional background gives me a high bar as to what actually constitutes a progress tracker, and you're right. But I also ask myself, are we actually entitled to one? If someone buys a million-dollar condo in a building under construction, do they get the contractor's weekly progress reports and a full CPM chart? No, they don't. CIG has an information obligation to us, but they also have an obligation to provide a supportive work environment to the employees and contractors. I sure wouldn't want to work on a software project where every weekly update on my work was scrutinized by the entire planet. Software development is stressful enough without having it happen in that public of a fishbowl. So CIG took this frosted glass fishbowl of a workforce allocation chart and called it a progress tracker because marketing knew that we wanted to see something called a progress tracker. But it isn't. Does that mean it is worthless? No, as long as you have a clear head about what it is and isn't, it is actually quite useful and has solved a big problem for CIG. You may not go back that far, but before this new roadmap was created, there was a constant drumbeat on places like Reddit and the old forum saying, how many people are working on the game and not just marketing? Is anybody doing anything besides just making more ships to sell? You don't see those posts and those questions anymore because the roadmap completely crushes them. And for answering those questions, a workforce allocation chart is perfectly suited. We know, in fine-grained detail, how many people are working on the game and what they are working on besides just new ships to sell. But because of the name CIG has given it, people are using it to give an unwarranted certainty about what has been done and are going to be disappointed unless it actually appears in the release. And with this rather extended disclaimer out of the way, I'm going to, in future videos, discuss the roadmap a little more because, as I said, there are some questions it does answer. And now for an update on our Grow the Channel ship giveaway. As of recording, we are at 91% of the subscriber goal and 93% of the membership goal, or the IE Expo, whichever happens first. Giveaway to some lucky player, their choice of the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Mist Odyssey, the long length look ahead launcher lorry. One entry per video. Members prior to the publication of the winning video are entered automatically, and if the winner is a member as of the publication date of the winning video and of the drawing time, remember that if you've let your membership expire, they will win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the thing I described as being made from frosted glass. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.